Shalom, and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. My name is Ron Grossman. We're continuing our studies in the book of 2 Thessalonians. We're in chapter 2, verses 6 through 12. This is for March 26, 2023. The title of this message is Holding Back Evil. Let's stop, let's pray, and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, thank you now for your Holy Spirit that works in our lives as we look at your word here, that we would be encouraged by what you would have us to hear and see here. We ask now that perhaps one person may come to know you as personal Savior through this, and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Follow with me, please. We're going to read verses 6 through 12. Now you know that what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he has been taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie that they shall all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, last time, the title of our message was, Do You Remember? And we looked at uh, verses uh, 1 through 5 of this chapter. And what Paul wanted to have them remember was, Do you remember what I told you about the end times? Do you remember that you are not in the end times? And the first evidence, Paul said, was, We the church are still here. And so our message today is holding back evil, and we are going to ask the question, what holds back evil? In verses 6 and 7, we see God is at work. In verses 8 and 9, we see God still is at work. And verses 10 through 12, we see that God remains at work. Even when the Holy Spirit ceases operating in certain ways, God remains at work. The controversy at this time, and people love controversy, was does the Holy Spirit leave when the church is raptured? Some people in the church believe that and teach such, but that's not correct. Versus, uh, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts and draws people to Jesus and salvation. And the Holy Spirit will be drawing uh, people to salvation even during the tribulation period after the church has been removed. Verses 6 and 7 here appears to help dispel that false teaching. The church age was over according to those who were sending this false teaching into the church of Thessalonica. And now that they were the church age was over, they were in the tribulation period. Now Paul has purposely said in verse 5, which is the bridge verse to this section, he says this, Remember you not that when I was with you I told you these things. That would refer back to 1 Thessalonians, specifically chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, the rapture passage, and then in chronological order after that, verses chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, the day of the Lord passage. So you see the church is removed in 1 Thessalonians 4, and then comes the day of the Lord, the time of God's judgment. So how could the lawless one, as it's going to go, we're going to go on and discuss here, how could the lawless one be at work, and how could we be in the tribulation period if the church had not been yet removed? Well, the false teaching was that, and here's one of them, is that Nero, the Roman emperor at that time, was persecuting Christians, and he was likened to being the Antichrist. He was the Antichrist, some said, and there was one person who was restraining him from having full reign. It was a a Roman senator, senator or statesman by the name of Seneca. And for a period of time, he restrained Nero from doing even worse things that he was already doing. Some of the things that Nero did, uh, for example, he would crucify Christians and then impale them on the, the, the these crosses and have them in his garden for his garden parties at night. He would douse them in oil and light them on fire while they were still alive. And he would light his uh, garden parties with the burning uh, bodies of Christians on crosses. That's how evil Nero was. There have been evil people right down through history who have done some of the most heinous kinds of things. It didn't need to be Nero. It didn't need to be Hitler. There have been all kinds of people through history. And oftentimes people ask the question, well, are we in the end times? 
Uh, I can recall uh, people um, telling, telling me uh, that during World War II, many people likened Hitler unto the Antichrist. No different than likening uh, Nero back in Roman times because of what he was doing to the Jewish people. But he wasn't and isn't because in order for the Jewish people to come to faith in Jesus, they have to be in their land and they were not in their land yet. Some of the most horrible things needed to happen to the Jewish people in Europe. One third of the world's total Jewish population perished in the Holocaust. Finally, the world was moved to say, well, yes, let's give them a homeland. And the re, uh, reinvigorated state of Israel, the modern day state of Israel, was born out of the ashes of the Holocaust in 1947-1948. Well, that false teaching was wrong in 1945, and that false teaching was wrong in the time of the early church. So Seneca was eventually removed, and he no longer was restraining Nero, so some people saw Seneca as likened unto the Holy Spirit. So you see, here's God. We're in the, Holy, we're in the uh, tribulation period, because look what God has done with Seneca. He's removed him, and so Seneca was, was being used of the Holy Spirit to hold back evil. That again was wrong teaching. It is wrong teaching. What is holding back evil is God himself. You can look at various times in the, in portions of the scripture where we see God himself actually holding evil back. Genesis chapter 6, uh, in verse 3, it speaks about God's spirit there and, and the, the evil that is at play in the world leading up to his, uh, his drawing Noah in to build the ark to remove uh, him and his righteous family and all clean living animals from off the earth because he was soon to send a flood. God removed Noah and his family in the ark, then sent judgment. It's a foreshadowing of God will remove the church in the rapture and then send judgment. God allowed Noah and his family to come back to planet earth and, uh, well, they were there, still there, but they were floating in this, uh, this ark, this large boat, for 40 days and 40 nights before the waters finally receded. And he allowed them out of the ark and all the animals as well, and if things started again. Such will be the same thing. At the end of the tribulation period, when Jesus returns, he will set up his 1,000-year reign here on, Christ, uh, on earth. And it's no different than the uh, church being removed uh, as Noah was removed in the ark. And it's God who holds back that evil until he allows the evil to just keep going. In Job, in chapters 1 and chapter 2, you see that God says to Satan, when Satan is summoned to heaven, and he uh, God asks him, where have you been and what are you doing? And look at my servant Job. And Job, uh, Satan says, well, I can make Job sin. And, he says, and God says this, you can do whatever you want to Job, but you can't have his life. And two tests were sent to Job. And eventually, Job was restored by God, just like the world will be restored for the thousand-year reign of Christ after a time of tempting, after a time of attack, after a tribulation of a sort. You see, God holds back evil, and he's using the church to hold back evil today. Verse 6 and 7 speaks about the holding back of evil. God is at work. You see, it, he know, you know now that what withhold if he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he is taken out of the way. That is the rapture of the church. The, the old word there, let and to let, means uh, literally, um, as it says here in, in verse 6, to restrain. It's a restraining. So you see, it is God who is restraining evil. But when the church is removed, the spirit who is at work in the world through the church will not have that influence that the spirit had prior to that. And so you see, it will be different. It will be changed. And then the spirit of iniquity will be at work because the spirit of God 
is taken out of the way to allow that evil to work. But God will remain at work, and that's what verses 8 and 9 are about. Then shall that wicked one be revealed. That's what it means there in the old King James English. It says, then shall that wicked be revealed. It literally means that lawless one. And the lawless one is the Antichrist who makes his laws for himself. And it is he who de declares himself to be God. Now, Dr. Walbert made it quite clear in his expert opinion on this subject. I remember discussing this with him a number of years ago when I asked him, about this passage, and I said, I, I, I tend to understand it at the time. I said, the, the Holy Spirit is removed from the world, and he said, it can't be, because God is the Holy Spirit. Is God omnipresent? Well, he is, and he is everywhere, everywhere. He's God. He, the Holy Spirit is God. God is omnipresent. Not only is he omnipresent, he's omniscient and omnipotent. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, and he is everywhere but he'll function differently once the church is taken out of the way. The church is used now of God to restrain evil in the world. It's not that we're sitting here and putting up our hands and saying, stop, you can't go here, you can't go there. There's some who believe that, that we have this uh, responsibility to say no uh, to things. We need to be a moral majority and, and all the rest that you may have heard of in recent years. But our responsibility is to go out and preach the gospel and see the people coming to faith in Jesus, both Jewish and Gentile alike. And God will take care of the rest of these things. It is not for us to do that. You see, Job, uh, book of Job speaks to the fact that Satan has to answer to God, and he can't go forward and do the evil of this end age unless God says, it's time. And you can do, but only do so much. But you know what's going to happen? It is with the spirit of his mouth, verse 8, the latter part of verse 8, who will destroy with the brightness of his coming that very one who thinks that he can have a free reign to do what he wishes. It is Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet who will set themselves up on planet Earth in the last days as the false triunity of God. They will present themselves and try to imitate God. Closely imitated, but never really and truly presented. You see, they can't do that. The last three verses of this passage must be looked at together. It's uh, verses 10, 11, and 12. It says that all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. This is speaking about people who will not accept Jesus as Messiah. Now, during the tribulation period, some will come to faith in Jesus. Many will lose their life for their faith. It'll be the worst time in all of human history to be a believer in Jesus. But still, people will come. I've always said that one of the things that... Uh, will happen is that with the supernatural removal of the church that people will look and say hey I heard about this rapture of the church they're gone I missed it I want to be saved and I think many will come to faith by the evidence of our absence our not being here well what we're told here today is that we're presenting the gospel still. Our responsibility is to simply go out and tell people about Jesus. Many will say no. Some will say yes. Many will say no. Not many said yes to Noah in his time. And the only ones who got on the ark were Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, and those animals that God supernaturally called to walk onto that boat. And these people are the deceived ones and they will perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. Now, the comparison to this that Paul is making to here is, if you go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, the opposite here is this, where some are saying in the, after the tribulation period begins, we don't want to know about this God. Uh, you should know about this God, Paul is inferring here. He says, look, here's the difference in you. Verse 13 of Second, First Thessalonians 2, it says, For this cause also thank, we thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. They were believers 
contrasted to these here that appear at the end times who will refuse to accept God. And then in verse 11, God will send them a delusion that they will literally believe the lie. And the lie is that Satan will declare himself to be God, but he cannot be God. He wants to be God. He wanted to. He rebelled in heaven. He was cast out of heaven. Read Isaiah chapter 14. There's an account of that in there. And he was put out of heaven. That's why he roams to and fro on the earth, as God asked of him in Job chapter 1 and 2. That's why he is here. He goes about, Peter says, as a roaring lion, seeing whom he may devour. But I always say this. He can't do it. He's a toothless lion. And the reason why? He was defeated at the cross. God remains in charge. And that they all might be damned. It means here condemned. It's an old word here in the King James English. That all will be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Uh, you can look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, and you'll see that there are going to be so many who come before the great white throne of judgment whose names will not be found written in the Lamb's book of life. And they will be condemned to an eternity separated from God in this very place that is called hell. You don't need to go there. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile, where you've come from, how old you are, how young you are. You can make a decision about Jesus today, knowing that he came at the right time in history fully man, fully God, willing to go and die in your place on that cross. All you have to do is believe by faith. Do you believe that Jesus is your personal Savior? If you haven't, I'd like to hear from you. Go to our webpage, www.ihopecanada.org. We'd be happy to hear from you there. And you can ask me any question you want. Send me a message there. You can send me a message on our, my email address, which is ron at ihopecanada.org. We are a faith ministry at the same uh, webpage, www.ihopecanada.org. You can find various ways and means you can give a gift to this ministry. In Canada, if you hit the support us icon, in Canada or the U.S., hit the support us icon on that page. And you can say, if you're a Canadian, you can send and have a Canadian bank account. You can send an e-transfer, Canadian account to our Canadian account. Or you can give a gift by PayPal. Go on our PayPal page there. It's a live icon. You can send a gift immediately there. Or you can find our uh, P.O. Box address in Ottawa on our webpage. Again, www.ihopecanada.org. If you are in the United States, uh, you can give a gift to us through our USA partners. Um, simply send uh, a check to I Hope USA. 2330 Norton Lane, North Bloomfield, Ohio, 44450. Put on the memo line, Grossman Support Canada. We do appreciate every one of you who have um, supported us in the past, sent us emails, and uh, have uh, been encouraging to us. Please pray. There are some serious financial issues at this time, and we would ask that the Holy Spirit and God would work to overcome these things. Thank you again for looking in here today. Let's close our time in prayer. Father God, thank you again for Jesus, for eternal life. We ask now blessing from the time we've had here in your word and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time we say, Shalom.